Recognize the gentleman from Wisconsin, Mr. Fitzgerald. Uh, thank you, Chairman Issa. Uh, certainly appreciate Mayor Minto hosting us here today. Um, this is, I made numerous visits to the border since I've been a member of Congress, and um, you always walk away with a unique experience or something different that makes an impression on you. Um, but everything that I've seen uh, certainly, I think, causes more concern uh, for any of us who find ourselves uh, kind of in a position of either being on Judiciary Committee. I, I will mention I'm also a member of Financial Services uh, as well, and there is a nexus, uh, believe it or not, between the two committees as we continue to see uh, an infiltration of those that aren't uh, necessarily considered uh, somebody that's just crossing the border for uh, whether it is asylum or even uh, even if they say they're here to to look for employment or or whatever whatever reason they might offer. So th this is becoming bigger and bigger and bigger every day that passes. Uh, so I represent the far western suburbs of Milwaukee. Um, still a fairly rural district in Wisconsin. A lot of agricultural related industry in and around there. Um, still many, many dairy farms in Wisconsin. Um, and I would say three or four years ago, we weren't really feeling the impact, I think, uh, certainly not as significant as, as what we're hearing about today or, or what I've heard about, whether you're in McAllen, Texas, or if you're in the Tucson sector, which we were a couple months ago, and some of the other border visits that we've done. Um, but uh, I wanted to start with a quick question for the DA. And actually, these are numbers from the U.S. Attorney's Office. In the first nine months of fiscal year 2022, San Diego and the surrounding area accounted for 60% of all fentanyl seizures nationwide. The, not my number. You know, like I said, that's a U.S. Attorney's number. I'm, I'm wondering, and based on what we've known before and what what we saw yesterday, as the chairman brought up, uh, in the vault, which I've now been able to uh, visit on two separate occasions, uh, all the evidence being held related to the Ninth Circuit and the cases that they're prosecuting, managing. Um, it, this is a great concern, obviously, across the nation. I've got parents that have had children that have died from fentanyl use. Uh, obviously, you know, these stories continue to kind of percolate out there as, as we hear them, sometimes with a cloud of mystery as to what exactly happened. But District Attorney, can you tell us specifically about what you see related to fentanyl crimes right now? Yeah, it, <clears throat> fentanyl is overwhelming Riverside County, uh, just as you, as you mentioned, uh, Congressman. It's, it's pouring in across our southern border, and it's coming through Riverside County. Riverside County is a pass-through to other destinations. Los Angeles is the largest uh, market for illicit, illicit drugs. So comes to Riverside County, many, many of the drug uh, gangs that use Riverside County as sort of a, a holding. They'll, they'll, they'll get homes, fill it up with fentanyl and other drugs, and then ship it out to other parts of the country as the, the orders come in. They're running a, a business. The cartels are running a business. And they're, they're essentially uh, using our open border as, as a business opportunity. The heartbreaking thing, and I'm glad you mentioned it, Congressman, you know, I gave statistics in my opening uh, statement about, you know, the number of deaths going up since 2020, uh, 1,200 some percent. And I always hesitate to do that because it, it, it sort of clouds the reality. The reality is that these are, these are real people, real families with a son or daughter that's been taken from them uh, by these criminals. And, you know, I can't go anywhere in Riverside County without being stopped by a family that wants to talk to me about and tell me the story of their child being taken from them and cut down in the, in the spring of their life. And what's happening, unfortunately, is that the cartels have moved into the counterfeit pill business. And as I mentioned, 70 percent of the, of the pills, the illegal pills on our streets, are, contain fentanyl. And so these, these people are dying. They think they're taking an Adderall. They think they're taking a Percocet. And obviously, we don't condone illegally buying Percocet or Adderall on the internet, but but they're being killed, and and it's murder. To me, it's murder. I think it should be murder all across this country, 
um, an illegal, a criminal who poisons an American with fentanyl belongs in prison. And what we're seeing is just a wave of these deaths. Last year in 2023, we had 554 deaths in Riverside County fentanyl related. As I said, as, as, as recently as 2016, we had two. And if we didn't have Narcan in the hands of every police officer and sheriff's deputy, you could probably add a zero to those number of deaths. And so this is a, this is a tidal wave of death and destruction that's coming across our open southern border. We have to get a handle on this fast. It's, it's wrecking our communities. Thank you, um, Mayor Minto. You talked a little bit about, and, and I would ask the same type of question to Mayor Franklin, uh, because we're seeing our own communities where there is an absolute depletion of resources related to trying to fight this. And I'm talking about a community in Wisconsin, right? Um, where there are a number of law enforcement actions related to it. It can be anything from a fender bender in the parking lot, but if you've got an illegal involved in that incident, suddenly it escalates and, and blooms into a much bigger deal than otherwise it would be. And so, so specifically for your law enforcement, that portion of your budget, I mean, what kind of constraints and how difficult has that been for you to manage? I'll ask Mayor Minto first and then Mayor Franklin. I do have to uh, give full disclosure here. We're a contract city with the uh, Sheriff's Department. So we are very fortunate in the fact that we don't always have to come up with extra money out of our budget at our city. Okay. And uh, so, but the question is, what happens at the county level? How much money do they have to come up with? And like I talked a little bit about in my statement is that if we weren't putting money into these transit centers, then there'd be a lot more money that was needed when, uh, you know, the, the DA was actually spot on when he said how impacted we are by not having things like Narcan or, or this, some of the other types of drugs. Uh, can you imagine how much money we would have saved and been able to put into other resources if we didn't have to buy all that medicine just to keep people alive who took something that they didn't know what they were taking? That's what's really important. And so for us, uh, we're very fortunate. We don't have to come up with a lot of extra money. And uh, I don't know about uh, Mayor Franklin, if he has that same uh, type of um, experience or not, but the only thing we really come up with more money is to, like, for instance, a lot of these people become homeless on our streets. Yeah. So we have to address it from that angle. Right. Chairman, we indulge Mayor Franklin? Of course. Yep. So we're also a contract city, but of course we pay uh, $273,000 to the county for each deputy that we employ, and the number we employ is a decision of our council. So uh, we do spend more money on law enforcement than any other uh, budget item. Uh, and my city is the single busiest sheriff station in the entire county of the 12 uh, cities that are policed by the sheriff. Um, we have a major issue with uh, availability of jail beds. Uh, and one of the biggest problems that we face is that our deputies and police officers in other parts of the county, uh, when they're making arrests, they don't have the capacity in the jail to jail folks. Uh, we've made some really, really horrible decisions as a state uh, and some bad decisions in the county. Uh, AB 109 that released half of our prison population uh, and put about 25% uh, of that uh, population in our county jails has taken beds and space away. Uh, but the whole problem of border crime, and as I, I talked about in my statement, we know that tens of thousands of these crimes are initiated, originated by people who are here unlawfully. Clearly, it's placing a significant burden on all of our law enforcement resources that would not be there if we had a secure border. Thank you, Chairman. I'll yield back. Thank you. Uh, 